Greetings, goons, gangsters, and gamers. It's your boy, The Goods Tonight. We are back once again doing a review on another chest rig. So, previously, we looked at the chest rig for the Eagle Industries multi purpose chest rig. Well, M was the MPCR, however they pronounce it. It was a really interesting design, and I liked it a lot because I had already run the uh, Spiritus little, um, little chest rig lure setup and then the Haley Strategic D3 CMR. And they're pretty nice. I haven't had a chance to try like the heavy, but I've tried out the larger chest rigs, and I do like them a lot, so there's a lot of uh, design similarities with the Eagles, I'm assuming they had a similar government contract, sort of like design choices going on, but I finally got a chance to try out the um, LBT 1961 AR, which we're wearing right now, underneath our nice little uh, full-on 16-inch <laughs> right, full LPVO, because it kind of goes nice if you're, um, so chest rigs, especially compared to uh, freaking, um, uh, plate carriers, generally the chest rigs are more old school, hence the old school uh, sort of camo design we got going on. But chest rigs are a bit more for the lighter weight, we're gonna run, crawl through the woods, and uh, do some reconnaissance. My brother actually did the whole scout sniper shindig, so he could probably tell us way more about chest rigs than I could, however, he is in a different country at the moment, so we won't be, uh, well, unfortunately we won't be able to do that, but if he ever gets out of here, we'll, uh, we'll get some deepest lore out of him, but Chest rigs have always been pretty cool. Um, the military gives you that little eagle nonsense one that's only been like used for parades and occasionally like the range, but this guy, I got to try this guy out because I really was impressed with the eagle one. I got that off of my good buddy and I thought it was pretty cool. But um, one of the key differences is the uh, pistol mags. That one being more old school uh, freaking, I guess, Marzok design because it's designed for the single stack 1911 pistol mags. Whereas this one will actually hold a uh, the double stack Glock mags, so I thought that was pretty cool. He still got two of them. That pocket no longer has that little, um, was it the Nexus buckle, so no more clip going on here, but the other three still do. So you got your, st your sort of basic eight magazine loadout, which is really comfortable, it gives you all the, uh, all the ammunition you need to fire, maneuver, GTFO, and, uh, yeah, so the goal, the chest rigs do a huge different thing from plate carriers. They all do their own thing. Plate carriers look really cool. Chest rigs have more of an old school aesthetic to them, but if you're going to be going up and down hills through impermissive, or imp, not less, not, less permissive terrain, we'll say. There's no, there's really nothing that's intraversible, but there's definitely challenges to traversing. So when you're doing crazier stuff like that, or the cool kid stuff, that's when chest rigs are generally a lot more prevalent. So they do a lot. This one's got, um... An interesting little um, thing, the P90, was it, the P83 battle jacket, which I did a review on not too long ago, and those crazy uh, canteen pouches with the little mag pouches on the front, and this sort of borrows from that design, so here we are, many years into the future, and that design still carries over to this day. This was actually bought not too long ago, so had a chance to wear it around a bit and do some uh, practice and work on it, but it was a pretty cool chest rig, so if you aren't looking for the micro chest rig, if you want to get into like the bigger full-on full capability chest rigs and this might be what you're looking for and they do have uh, I guess it's straight from the LBT website they do have a military discount so if you got those verify me it was a military veteran sort of discount thing going on so you can get this for a good chunk cheaper than its listed price so let's talk about it one we got four we got the eight magazines going on so we got a little bit of weight that's pretty much where all the weight comes from uh, on these Three of the mag pouches, one on the right, two on the left here, you pop open that buckle, you got your two mags, they sit very tightly in there, even the basic stand egg ones. Sit pretty tight up on the front, you got this little um, piece of Velcro. They had a lot more Velcro, less buttons, a lot more Velcro. You got your little drainage grommets and whatnot going on at the bottom. We're going to take a full on look at this once I take the magazines out and it's far more uh, easier to maneuver around with, but... Yeah, you got the zipper still here, you don't have the little buckle thing going on at the bottom no more. But the biggest change, the biggest addition, because this, we, well, we basically looked at this, and I already talked about the double stack versus the single stack magazine pouches. Key difference is those P83 inspired sort of a pouches. So what's going on here? Well, what we got on the closest to the body side, you got this little clip guy going on here. This guy right here is a whole on big old radio pouch. And you got two of these, one on each side, so you can be the cool guy who's doing the double comms talking to the aircraft and the base and the sea and the everything and doing the whole big coordination with two PTTs going ka 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 akimbo PTTs on the radio doing all the cool radio guy stuff so yeah this repeated everything's basically mirrored over on the other side so that's repeated off over here and yeah so cool radio pouch very nice setup because you already got all the things to run your route your radios and stuff 
So making the radios a bit more comfortable to wear uh, over a plate carrier and helmet sort of setup. Nice. Pretty cool. So going on from there, you pop open this buckle here. You got a bunch of Velcro up here on the front. There's this old school looking uh, retention. Yeah, it's pretty old school. It's got the little clips. I don't know. I'm not even sure what you would really call it. It's got the whole retention elastic going on. You could pop these buckles free or the buttons free and you can get access to what's in there. So for this pouch, we've got two replica smoke grenade smoke grenades going on. Basically to like fill it up and give you an idea of this overall size. So 50 smoke grenades. If you're running a chest rig and doing cool guy things, you're probably gonna be carrying smoke grenades. So that's a good spot to put them in. On the other side, I'd probably carry all the medical stuff if I wasn't just keeping it in a bag. So plenty of room. It's a pretty decent sized pocket. You got the little drainage grommet on the top on the uh, bottom down there. Up here on the top, they do do this unique thing with the, uh, there's a little hole up on the top thing, so I'm not sure. You can like put stuff in there, there's elastic, crazy designs going on. We'll take a closer look at that when we're done doing our overview. Up on these front sides, you got pockets here. This carries onto the little sort of like, um, what is it, kangaroo style sort of setup they got going on with the uh, P83. So on this left one here, they are technically designed for grenades, although they are a bit more square shaped in design. So you can easily throw in a pair of binoculars if you so choose. A little simple small pair. Your larger binoculars would probably need one of these uh, larger DP pouches. But yeah, like I said, smoke grenades, you can throw freaking um, night vision devices. devices. Really nice and uh, binoculars, all sorts of crazy stuff you can fit in there. So Off on the right side, as you can see, we actually got a replica dummy grenade going on in here. So it is designed to hold grenades. It's got the... Um, Two little bits of uh, molly flapping on the sides actually hold the uh, spoon in place. So you, with your grenades, you always want to have all sorts of crazy protective measures so the spoon does not get away when you do not want the spoon to get away. And you can put that back in there pretty easily if it's um, that guy. Do, 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 slide that back through there and show bam. So yeah, decent. So that's most of the uh, basic stuff going on. There are the flaps on the side here so if we pop this buckle free there are buckles on the front that's a really nice addition they added so you can actually pop that free sort of like a <laughs> hillbilly overall style it and that'll actually give you access to your map pouch on the inside is all the um, soft hook and loop system and uh, on top of that they even have the elastic bands so you can keep all your map pens and whatnot compass and everything in there keep your maps nice and flat on the side so you can make sure you're not getting horrifically lost because the environment is generally more likely to kill you than the uh, the bad guy. So, yeah, you gotta be just as cautious as that, if not more so. Where look at the magazine pouches. So, it carries handgun knife pouches, but one of the big things with uh, chest rigs, in particular this larger caliber, they generally help cover up your belt line, so you have a bit more difficulty carrying stuff on the belt. So, what happens to your handgun? Well, I'm glad you asked. Up on the side here in a cross drawer sort of setup, there is an insert it comes with, a little basic leather. We'll take a look at this here too in a second. A little really simplistic leather design stitched together, a little bit of uh, Velcro on there so you can put a handgun in there. So, if you wanted to carry a handgun with you, you can uh, grab, we're gonna take this um, replica of a George Washington musket pistol here, slide that guy in there and bam, you're good to go. <laughs> You've got your sidearm so you can be going, you can be throwing out the pew pew pew. Ah, we got stuff going on. Pop, 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 pop. Ah, I've got hardwood floors. I can't just throw my mag on the ground. Oh, I got through a dump pouch on here. We're going to look at that. So it's helpful to have a dump pouch because these mag pouches are very tight. Wow, we're um, taking a lot of time. Probably something we should train around. So drop that guy in there. Pop this open. We grab another mag. Shapam. Easy peasy. Mag's back in the rifle. He's still going to pop, pop, pop. Oh, no. They're coming up on us. Tally ho, lads. All right, cool. So we fire off the musket and then pop open here. Oh no, I gotta, I gotta reload my musket, but I'm a Californian um, anti-gun guy. So this obviously the bullet goes in there and this obviously when you rack that bag, this clicks in there. Yeah, musket's reloaded. <laughs> Whatever nonsense they got going on. So musket. So yeah, you can fit a musket in there, you can fit most full-size handguns. It's a very universal sort of design. And if it doesn't work, well, it is a basic sort of like uh, Velcro system. You could design your own things to go on from there. So of course, being the back, the back's pretty simple setup. It's got the little elastic stuff. I got the dump pouch thrown in there to make life just a bit more comfortable for anything I might need to throw in there. And yeah, you can easily 
fit your whole backpack over here and you're ready to go camping through the woods. So, let's uh, take a more detailed look. I'm going to go ahead and we're gonna pull out this grenade again. I'm just going to haphazardly toss that off on the corner in the least safe manner imaginable. And yeah, so you obviously you can pop them in the front, the front chest and get easy access if you need to get access to your stuff through there. Oh no, I need to remove my holster. Bam, it's that simple. Get the holster off just like that. And it is the sharp pokey velcro on both sides, so it could be flipped over. It's really just holding on to the close to the body side, and the other does whatever. And that's all that goes on that. So I'm going to pop all these magazines out real quick, because they take up... They add a lot of weight, and when you're trying to do this review, like, say, me yesterday, and I wasn't too thrilled with how the review turned out, because the magazines were more or less a constant nuisance in trying to maneuver this, uh, this guy around to do a whole demonstration, so. Yeah, throw these guys out. But yeah, 8 mags. 8 mags is a pretty solid number to carry, so. You can't really, uh, ignore all of that. So, we pop this guy free. You can see we got the similar, um, shoulder setup. It's still the same material going on. It's a nice little soft padded. Fits relatively comfortable. You got the same um, little two uh, piece little H harness thing going on. That's just, was it a uh, Velcro? Flips on top of each other. Now as for me, you're gonna notice, if you haven't already, that there's that um, sh black piece of electrical tape there, and there's two pieces over these things. And the reason being is if you're not wearing a comfy field jacket, if you're trying to wear like a normal t-shirt on the range or something simple, then uh, this is basically replicated out here. On the outside here, you see you got the sharp edges of the corners, and those don't really hold too well with the um, with the Velcro. So these are surprisingly sharp, like not a hazard, but they will find whatever nerves you got running up along the left side of your spine, and they're just gonna freaking jam in there like it's cool. And it is wildly uncomfortable. So if you leave this just a bit more open or folded or anything you got to do, and you wrap electrical tape over that, problem solved. As for the front part, well, depending on how gargantuan you are, because some of the uh, enlisted dudes I've seen are, uh, I believe the term is corn fed, <laughs> massive dudes, then it's probably less of an issue for them because they actually don't need to max out all of these straps like I do, but yeah, for these front parts, since these sit really close to the, uh, yeah, the thingies, I don't want them like getting pinched and all sorts of crazy stuff, so, and it will do that so you can get some mildly, inc some significantly increased comfort off of those things there. So, as you notice, we got our two clips up here on the front. We got our clips on the back. These are larger Nexus buckles than normal. So if you wanted to do some absolutely insane, hey, I want to take this, have the zipper closed, and uh, use these to somehow mount it into my plate carrier so I can carry more bags and crazy stuff and have the back, have my buddy do the little back strap. So <laughs> everything's cool. You can still do that. It's really old school to run it with um, just like slick armor and stuff. Still doable. Um, if you're running through the woods and being super high speed, your the general consensus is you're going to be less inclined towards the armor and more inclined to having more stamina and speed to work off of. So, to each their own. You could totally do that, but you, be in mind these are larger clips than normal, so you're going to need to get some uh, aftermarket stuff. Of course, you got those repeat on the back. Here's the nice little. Um, do the Velcro little closure sort of setup. I think it's pretty cool if your uniform has less Velcro on it, more standard old school pockets, because these do like to catch up on Velcro and occasionally vegetation. But you know, it's not a huge issue, and if you are concerned, or if you're like me and you're probably never really gonna have to adjust it ever again, um, you can always wrap electrical tape over those too. Give them a little bit of extra stability. Down here you got the standard two little clips on the sides. There's no like elastic or anything to make it, uh, give it any like give when you're breathing or moving around stuff, but generally, a non-issue. I got the dump pouch just attached to that, a little old-school BDS dump pouch. So if you want to take this apart, you can totally undo all these clips. Pop free the front ones, pop free the back ones. And yeah, there we go, now we have our harness separated from the whole setup, the whole shebang. Uh, yeah, so you can get a decent look there on how that's all going. They're really, LBT always does a really good job with the stitching. And of course you got these little thingies back here and there for attaching some sort of like weird back panel thing. I don't have any real experience with it. They are included on the older Eagle Industries one as well, as you may notice. But these guys are now attached to this um, next to your cable antenna management stuff. These guys are like attached to a piece of Velcro there so you can adjust the right height. So apparently they like 
normalize the right height of whatever panel, backpack, little bag thing you got going on there. So that has been somewhat simplified. So those things out there, if you're wearing a backpack, you would think, hey, aren't these going to dig into your back? But as you'll notice, they intelligently put the padding underneath them. So they're just going to hit into the padding and cause you no real discomfort or issue whatsoever. Oh, uh, moving on. I'll actually throw this all on. I think I got a backpack liner out here somewhere. I'll find one. But moving on, we pop free the, uh, the nasal gloves. So you got two more down here. They kind of fit a little wonky because I am not necessarily the hugest dude in the world. But yeah, you can throw a little dump pouch on there. And that's just a little piece of uh, nylon. You got your little clips. And yeah, webbing. Set up, little cell. And same setup going on there. So nothing too crazy. Easy to adjust, easy to manage and fairly simplistic as you'll notice it does come in effectively two pieces so here we got our left part that was chilling here a second ago um yeah so magazine pouch simple enough pop that open uh you got the elastic to help keep the mags together when there's only one in there keep that from running away all that crazy stuff drainage grommets yeah plenty of drainage grommets two on each on the bottom make sure you get all that water out in more humid nasty environments and this guy up here on the front, he's not terribly massive. You can sort of fit like a small handheld radio in there. And people have shown you can put like tiny compasses. You can get a few like simple things going on in there. But uh, let's be honest, most people are just going to use it for uh, dip cans. So, you know, know your, <laughs> know your market, I guess. And yeah, I've seen some people throw handcuffs in there, but probably not going to get too much use out of handcuffs out in the woods. So, and again, repeated, same thing going on here on the next adjacent pouch. And here we got a closer look at our radio guy going on, so you got that piece of elastic that helps hold the radio in place, and that's got a little strap over there. And that's a pretty massive full-sized radio pouch. It comes down here, again as a drainage grommet, probably don't want too much water on your radio, but you know, say la vie, that's life sometimes. There's a separation between that and the GPay pouch that doesn't do anything of particular note. And here you got the uh, the drainage grommet for the GP pouches covered by this elastic and reinforced uh, thing here. Why is it reinforced? I don't know. I'm sure that it prevents wear and tear in the future. As far as the GP pouch itself, pop that guy open as you can see. Here's the little um, weird nook I was talking about. Same sort of like design to keep uh, probably just a standard reinforcement. But you could probably put like small things in there like, uh, I don't know, like a stick of gum or contraband or something crazy like that. Um... <laughs> Pop these guys, there's your little like old school machine gun little pouch cover guy going on. You can pop that free entirely, but generally if you have like smaller stuff in here or multiple stuff like an IFAC that's kind of like in bits and pieces, then having this guy fully closed is going to make sure your parts aren't uh, escaping against your will. So this guy pops all out. He's got, uh, what is it, three, four, five, six, seven, seven buttons all together. So seven buttons, seven C's, Ura Marine Corps. <laughs> and yeah, you fit a whole fist in there. You can fit crazy snacks, night vision, that's general purpose. And up on the front, kangaroo to all that, is where you have your little grenade pouch that also serves as like a mini GP pouch. It is uniquely square in design for be considering uh, grenades generally aren't square, they tend to be more round. I mean, society could change in the future when this video <laughs> is getting viewed. And yeah, there's your little hooks on the side. I don't know, you wouldn't call them hooks, you can call them little loops, I guess. Little loops on the side there, and that's where you put your uh, spoon through. And it's omnidirectional, so you have it go either direction, it'd be just fine. And of course, naturally, drainage grommet down at the bottom of the uh, clasp, there, clasp there, so you don't need to use all the clips, you can rely on the Velcro, but honestly, you can use both and uh, not run any risk of losing any of your stuff ever, so that's pretty cool. So repeating on the right side, the only key difference here is that this is now a slick piece. This guy pops up, holds your two mags, chabam. Then down in here, you got your two pistol mags. Now designed for double stack instead of the single 1911. So if you're still running an old school 1911 or a single stack handgun, you could still use the uh, MC2P, or not the MC2P, oh my God, the micro purpose chest rig just fine. And uh, yeah, you can still carry all your mags and everything. So again, repeated magazine pouch, same GP pouch setup, same uh, small parts cover and everything going on there, very block shaped. And ultimately pretty cool so looking on so as far as the map part i only talked about briefly you pop this guy open here that's where you get all this access there's your freaking webbing or not your webbing your uh, little elastic bands for all your map pens and crazy stuff pocket knives and stuff you need to keep in there and then it's all just open space for maps and that 
A little easy tab to get access to. Close that back up. Shabam. Easy peasy. So we just gotta go ahead and gotta get all this stuff closed up for the most part. And yeah, so we're gonna reassemble it real quick. Easy enough. It's gonna start. Uh, clip this guy in here. Wrong. That goes on the other side. It's okay. I'm a, a professional. Everything will be okay. Clip that guy over there. Take this guy. I'm gonna clip you in here. So yeah, you probably gave more of a breakthrough than you, uh, or more of a breakdown than you were anticipating, because I've only seen like two or one other review, and the guy didn't go nearly as in depth, which is what piqued my curiosity into this whole design, and ended up causing me to buy one because I wanted to sort of, well, one get Coyote Brown, and also because the Coyote Tan's all right, but it's a little dated. But yeah, you can throw all that together. Okay, boom. Then we just need to attach our dump pouch attachment single clasp. And yeah, ultimately, like, the full-size chest rigs, they're, they're more my sh they're more my shebang. Less so inclined towards the, uh, basic, um, setup, so. I mean, the smaller micros, I guess they have, like, their purpose here and there, but... I don't know. This full-size, this full-size one just makes me happy, you know? So I think that guy, shebang, nothing crazy going on, get everything flat back there. And yeah, so we're not gonna need the handgun for there, we're start loading up bags. Shabam! So as far as putting the mags in, they do take some finesse because that elastic will catch with only a single one. And for the second one, generally just load it from the from the back, and you won't have any crazy issues. Shabam! Two mags. Move up the four mags going on. And each mag weighs generally a pound, so one of the reasons it's better to run eight mags without armor than trying to run like what three or six mags with armor is, uh, yeah, that, that weight, and that weight's gonna come for you. There's a mag in my rifle. Shabam! So free of those guys. And this this is, the, this is the wild pocket. This guy's all sorts of doing crazy stuff with those pistol mags and no clip. This is probably gonna be your faster mag to get access to, you know, left side first. A few tan mags over here. You in there, shabam. You in shabam, all right. Closure, no closure, closure, closure. No real need for a GP pouch at the moment. And no radios at the time. Well, I'm telling you, those two radios, they're gonna go hard. And yeah, you do have the little bits of, um, I didn't talk about this too much, but yeah, you got your molly bits here, so you can strap your radio, duct tape that through your PTT. And yeah, yeah, pretty comfy. And this also pops open if you need to attach any sort of like crazy Velcro thing going on there, so. And of course your antenna, hydro, crazy routers and stuff on both sides. So yeah, we got all that on. Um, do I have a backpack? Oh, there's a, there's my backpack. Yeah. Yeah, so the backpack's not like terribly loaded at the moment. So we're just gonna throw this guy on real quick. All right. So yeah, those actually, the location, the way the whole backpack sits on these straps is actually pretty optimal. So, Builds off of the padding, makes it pretty comfortable. Backpack sits a little high, and uh, yeah, we're ready to go do cool kid things out in the woods, <laughs> like um, you know, have a barbecue, and uh, make some s'mores. Maybe take a guitar with us, have a good time. So, shabam! Throw on your ear pro, plug in the PTTs, and you're ready to go do cool guy stuff, or at least figure out what everyone's like up to across the block. Yeah, cozy. So yeah, it's a cool little setup. I really enjoy it. So hopefully, if you guys were like trying to like learn more about just chest rigs in general, or if you were particularly interested in this model or comparing it to a uh, multi-purpose chest rig from Eagle, then uh, yeah, there are some. Well, I'd argue relatively significant improvements that make me uh, prefer this one. But the Eagle one is still pretty solid. I think the uh, multi-purpose chest rig goes for. I think it's a bit more of a collector item nowadays than. Uh, it might be cheaper to actually pick up one of these than uh, one of those, but you know, eBay does their thing. So, that's all I got for you guys today. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them down below. If they are questions, I'll do my best to answer them in the future, if whenever I see them. And uh, yeah, so that's the whole review. So, cheers everyone, stay chivalrous, and um, remember, it is the best looking camouflage pattern for a reason. See you guys.